Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer. And Dave, coming off the heels of Halloween, I feel like you're dressed as, um, what's his name? Cicerone. You're wearing Cicerone. a Cicerone. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I was looking at his costume, my favorite color, you know, yeah. <laughs> and I thought, I loved it. I would wear it. And Maybe you are. Not with the sparkles, I'm not so into it. It looked like a little, not me, but I liked it. And I thought maybe not for this program. I don't know that we're on the final look and iteration of that program. And speaking of which, we are gonna be discussing all things going on in figure skating, Grand Prix Italia, tons of news happening around the skating world, breaking by the minute. So if you are new here, please subscribe below and smash that like button. We have so much to discuss. Let's just get to the pyramid right away, Jonathan, because this is- Give us, give give the people what they want, Dave. Listen, it I thought I had the ranking last night. We you thought yeah. it has changed. And you know what? Yeah. People will be like, but it's injury. And you know what? Does a, care, a Terry care? No. Is it yeah, all it her doesn't fault? Matter. Yeah. Is it her fault if she let the skater do hundreds of quads a day? No. That is the skater's <laughs> fault for having a weak bone. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. This is the best day of Maya Roma. Maya Roma. The best day of her life. yeah. Maya, Maya, it is the yeah. best day of her life, Jonathan, yes. okay? Yeah, she's doing like great. A good Romanian gymnast, she's not saying that she's happy that Octavian Bellu hates Alexandra Marinescu. She's just taking advantage of it, okay? <laughs> Was it Opportunist. fault that Alexander Alexandrov benched Rosa Galieva? No, okay? But she walked through an opportunity when it presented itself. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Did Kutsu poison Galieva? You tried to get well, at it in that interview. About it, but she wasn't there. You know. Yeah. <laughs> she was These in the other room. Happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Leading the pyramid, the world record holder, Camila Valieva. She's nice. She's pleasant. She has flexible shoulders. She's you know landing what? the triple axel. She's yeah. hanging on for four more months, okay? Yeah. Do you yeah. know that on the Sports Are You Forum, they have been like debating her body measurements for years to the centimeter, maybe to the millimeter, Jonathan. Okay, it has happened Ugh. on the Russian Forum. Yeah. It's real. They have, even though you will get the fans that believe she is, you know, going to last forever, they're the ones that secretly do track. They know it's a, there's a timeline here. They yeah. know there's a timeline and they have been afraid yeah. for years. You know yeah. what? She's hanging on, Jonathan. Okay. She might just make it. Yeah. And like one week, it looks like I don't know if she's gonna make it. The next week, world record. Maybe right. the next week she's a little tired, and you're like, oh, maybe not. Next week, world record. And you know what? Exactly. She's at the top. She has fought her way there. She is the <laughs> Terry's favorite right now. Yeah. She's doing Diana. the work. Okay. Yes, of course. <laughs> Number two, my daughter. Jonathan, do you remember when I picked Anna and you picked Kostranaya as our daughter? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I did. Yeah. And I knew Anna wasn't as talented physically as Kostranaya. I knew she didn't have the skating skills. But you know what she has? She has that iron will and the mind and the yes, desire she that she is going to outwork you. She could look like tired old in the short program and she could come back in the free. With will a quad flip. Yeah, that I absolutely was not expecting. But she yeah. was moving in practice, but yeah. when it comes time, she gets those bones around and she lands it, okay? Right. It was incredible, okay? Yeah. Well, we'll get into if her program, the theme may be a little heavy. For an Perhaps. Perhaps. Maybe a little complex for a four minute program. Agreed. Mm -hmm. But she landed a quad flip and won the event over Maya. Yeah. yeah, very elegant upper body. You know what? Very, mm. uh, yes. Mm. <laughs> now, Trusova was in the number three spot. Last and this is, and we understand that this is not Trusova's fault, but this is the way right now because we just found out, Dave. Trusova is out of NHK and thus likely out of the final. But remember, things happen. People have made the final with one victory before. 
Uh, it has happened. Oh, really? Just won. I didn't anticipate. Just won in 1997, 1998, pulled out of the Well, that's like when they were like inventing the Grand Prix final, I feel like. It was they the were... same thing. It was the Remember same. when they used to have like the um, skate-offs? Where like, then suddenly yeah. like everyone in the final would get down and then the top two had to do, like, they, they were, yeah. yeah, they were doing some weird stuff back then. I'm glad how it It, it, it didn't work out well. Now. It, was, it was not a great thing. Yeah. Maya, number three. She was ahead after the short program. It looked like she was going to move up on the pyramid potentially. Mm -hmm. And then Anna rose from the ashes like a phoenix. Yep. And it was not Maya's day. But you yeah. know what? Maya, she is sticking around. Okay. She is yes! playing the long game, Jonathan. Yeah. She has proven time and time again because I'm always convinced maybe it was a fluke. She is proving that these quads are here to stay. I, I, it will never not shock me. The technique invented by Amber Corwin, maybe not tech book, but she is Perhaps. Doing it. Yeah. Okay. And she is here for the moment. And you know what? Who is going to be around next season? I think Maya. Yes. I think Maya. Maybe or even the world's or the world's after the Olympics, also. Yeah. A yeah. Like she is making herself, she's not going away. All right. right. Like a cockroach right. in share. She is going to She's survive. She's sticking around. <laughs> she could survive Armageddon. Okay. It's she true. She lasted at Sabo 70 despite talent, despite, despite a lack of charisma. X Factor. Yeah. X yeah. Factor. There are other girls who have come and gone. Panenkova, uh, Surskaya, Left, oh, I love it. Yeah. All yeah. of them, you know. Who even remembers, you know? But there's, like you always say, Dave, like if we don't understand why someone is sticking around, but a Terry is choosing to keep them, there was absolutely a reason. Like she knew yeah, this was possible. Them. She knew it was in there when, when I really was perplexed as to what they were doing there, but clearly it worked. In the fourth spot, Trusova. Poor they thing. Heal. I'm getting nervous and here's why because people want Trusova to continue past this Olympics. They see the musculature, mm -hmm. they see that she is a real athlete and that mm -hmm. she has the potential to keep going and achieving things. But the, if it's in the foot and not in the ankle, which we don't really know where exactly the injury is, it makes me nervous because if you remember that Chen Lu was supposed to miss a, like a year of skating when she pulled out of the 94 Worlds, right. if it's broken navicular, the bone almost never heals properly when you're doing a sport like this, unless you take a complete year off of which your body can change, of which you lose your timing of, you know, right. a sport like this, it's devastating, right? Right. And you see like Steele Johnson with those kind of foot injuries, if it's a, you know, the foot break, those bones are very, you know, because the blood supply are very hard to heal. And someone like this, who's going to try to come back now, if it's the Olympics and out, and you can you can one and done it yeah you can yeah. one and done it pain relief whatever but if you're looking for long-term wellness health career i feel i fear for her because that's a really difficult injury to heal um especially when you're someone that's going to take that much pounding with six quads right well, that's I, the thing yeah and i think i think okay mentally i believe that she can withstand the pain and do her job that she wants to do at the Olympics. I don't know if it'll be enough to win gold against someone like Valieva with the momentum she's getting and the components. I think that, you know, it looked one way for Trusova when we saw her in Boston. And now because of the injury, you know, things are going a very different way. I, I don't know. Like, I think that she could do it in terms of pounding the body, but I don't think it will, it will last. Or what if it breaks again? Right. Could, they, could they let her sit out the Grand Prix final sit out the nationals like Medvedeva did and send her to Europeans? Yeah, but you're still gonna have Valieva, Sherbakova, Tukdemisheva, and Hrumich. And who knows what they're gonna do. Right. I, it's, a really, it's a really tough spot to be in. Now, I, I, like you're saying, even if there was a way for her to make the final, I would rather see her sit out the final as well, because she's basically buying herself now, you know, 
two competitions, she she doesn't have to. I think that they should sit her out of nationals. I think you're right too, because it's so early. That's the thing about this timing is like, you don't need her to peak at nationals or Europeans. And this is an athlete you know will prepare. But let's be honest, has she done enough this season and last season to automatically earn that spot to the Olympics? Or are we going off of practices and potential? And like a practice skate that was many months ago now. At the test this, skate. Yeah, this can change at any moment. It's, not, yeah, it, it's a real, because as I was watching this weekend, Anna was the sort of comeback I was not expecting. Mm-hmm. I didn't understand that she was going to be able to do what she did here, which is great for her. But now that we're all sentimentally rooting for Chukchamisheva and she's really making a push for her like clean three triple axles, she's really delivering consistency. To me, it's like an Anna Tukdamisheva thing, but of course the the news today about the injury puts a whole wrench in the whole thing. Now, Kostunaya, slow in Canada. Could she get the speed, the verve, the second triple axle back? It seems unlikely at this point, Yeah, but this could wake her up. Right, she could see an opportunity, yeah. This is why you put the top athletes together. It's not right that you have an injury to someone else and that motivates you, but human nature, it's an opportunity. Right. And as an athlete, you see the open door. Right. It's, ter- it's terrible to say. But right. you- but to me, it was almost a Kostranaya versus Chukdamisheva situation at first. But Chukdamisheva seems so solidly above Kostranaya mm. in the mix of things that I didn't know, again, if she feels motivated right now. But you're Daria. right. Maybe, maybe she sees an opportunity. I think Daria's prepping for next season or the pairs, you know, with the Terry. Uh, you know. But Daria is probably going to end up in the finals. If there's no truce of a, at NHK, like Daria will probably end up in the, in the, in the Grand Prix finals. Yeah. Medvedeva still bringing the drama on Ice Age. Yeah, okay. Lovely girl. Um, She's also a person. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, let's talk about NHK and who is there because... We have to, this shakes things up. I mean, it hasn't even made the Wikipedia that she's out, although it's in the news. Um, All right. So, Nicole Schott, Reno from Japan. She's someone that's for the Japanese Olympics, and we'll discuss this in a second. Kaori Sakamoto, Daria Ushishova, Ensu, uh, Young Yu. You know, she has a shot of the final now. Mm -hmm. Amber Glenn, and Alyssa Liu. Now, Daria, obviously great shot of the final. Young Yu, much better shot. Maybe Kauri in it? Probably not. You know, you never know. Probably not, yeah. You never know. But this is, um, yeah, we we don't know. Um, I know. This is a big switch up because, you know, again, we were thinking it could have potentially been an all Russian final. Yes. But of course, this does this does create a lot of opportunity for, for shaking up the countries there. Yeah, and of course, Rika Kihira out. Mm-hmm. So how about Rika and the Japanese team? Because, you know, we've had the pyramid for the Russians, and we discussed Chukdamisheva, right? Chukdamisheva is on my Olympic podium right now, on my Olympic team for sure. I have Anna penciled in now as the third after this weekend because of truce of his injury. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's discuss Japan. They've got Kaori. Rino is coming up. The Satoko still surviving. Uh, but, and the judge is still happy to help with what they can. Wakaba, who needs to do that triple triple in the second half. Uh, and I'm sorry. My Mihara is doing everything she's supposed to be doing to be considered for that team within her capabilities. Do you know what I mean? She has gone out now back to back and given us, albeit maybe a little underwhelming in the X factor, but she is delivering clean, lovely performances. In the kind of performances the Federation typically likes. Yeah. Safe, consistent, reliable, lovely. I don't know that it's what I would choose for Japan. Although with the team event, maybe I'd say, yeah, she can do one of the programs, right? We'll have to see. I, I don't know. I, I'm looking at- Because remind me, Dave, Japan is two or three ladies? Three. Three, yeah. So, I mean, the, the Rika thing is a real question mark and was a question mark even before- I mean, I'm hearing that she's not jumping season. flip Lutz or Axel right now. You have to see lack of training time within the program, obviously could come back, but 
you know, the back injury has been severe. It seemed to be affecting her last season. And, and there's a very solid group right there, ready to go. You know, if you're not going to be ready for this season, you almost got to think, well, long-term career, Japanese skating has a life in it. Uh, you almost want the good career and keep going. Right. I mean, right. obviously you want the Olympics, but it's not because even Olympics. healed, even healed. This is a tough podium for her to get near. So right. I, I just think like, yeah, maybe you're you're shooting your sights beyond this Olympics. Then. I think you have to. Yeah. In that situation. Yeah. I mean, it's November and it's it's tough, you know, and it's not something you wish on anyone. But at a certain point, you kind of have to make it. But. Let's so if it here. was today, if it was today, are you thinking Wakaba and Mai and Kauri? That's That would be my team. I think so too. But I would have Satoko as like a team captain slash coach for the team event because I think that her leadership and her mind and her contributions are such that I want her in the mix in some respect. Yeah. Right. To the point that I would consider cutting Mai but Maya's making it very hard with how she's skating. Kind right? of, yeah. And again, I, it's it's interesting. I went back after Skate Canada and mm -hmm. Skate America because like, we'll talk about some of the performances in Italy to now see them on TV. Yes, sometimes live you're getting more about ice coverage and speed, but I can, depending on the camera angle, I'm getting more nuances. So my was more energetic in person, I found. There was a little bit more sparkle to her than shows up on camera. I, so I understand a little bit why some people, like I remember Priscilla was utterly confused. She was like, I don't get it. I don't get the allure of my, and the thing is, this is a sentimental story. Yeah, she was story calling us out in the tweets and I'm like, I'm not gonna say something bad about the skater right there. Like things have changed, you know? Like we, yeah, we, exactly. But there is a, um, an emotional rooting for someone who ever makes a comeback. There is something delightful that she is exuding the joy of skating right now in a way that she's so happy to be doing it when not everyone seems so overjoyed to be doing it at the moment. And there's something very alluring about that live, especially. So you now, if I'm Japan and I'm the Japanese Federation and I'm the TV networks, I'm going to be a little bit strategic. Putting it out, skating has been growing since 2006. I would say, really, mm -hmm. was just got a little bit before, but really on this great trajectory since 2005 with Mao and you know, really, but growing, right? And I'm going to look at this and I'm going to say, okay, we have a great thing going. Skating has been so good. But we have Hanyu potentially bowing out, right? Satoko, uh, Daisuke came back. What are, we, what are we doing? You gotta get ready for the team event and you gotta make it a slam dunk Olympics. And I think that you have to pivot from an individual focus to being about the team, to being hmm. all about Japan's first team medal in skating. And because yes, I, they can do this. It's one small step, but it's huge. The team medal in skating. And, and like how Canada thanked Canada and they had all the stars together, you can put all of the Japanese stars together and I would have all the former stars involved in the broadcast. You bring back Mao. Marin Honda could be an interviewer. She could do the weather, okay? She I, wanna, I wanna see Akiko. Suzuki, Akiko, I, I miss her. her. Yeah, I, but I would have all knowing that the way that this team medal situation is looking with Canada really faltering out of it, I would get all the good juju together, all the stars, put them out on TV. And especially because Yuzuru, you know, announced an ankle injury this week. He announced he was going to do the quad axle in NHK. Next day we're hearing, you know, ankle injury and they really don't know uh, with his situation. You gotta think. Not a great look. He has every opportunity if he skates well and skates perfectly to medal. Excuse me. Is this that moment? Is this that moment? Yes, this is that moment. Okay. So wait, Dave. You know I love this candle. It's called Canceled Plans. It's a relatable scented candle. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, lighting my candle because Jonathan. It's good for the sport to have him competing. It is, um, but you got to think for the fans. This is like Michelle Kwan after we saw her at the Marshalls. Okay, when she was right. pulling out, this is like Blushenka. 
this is like Yuzuru last time. I mean, this is the truce of a fans. I mean, the next the next months are going to be rocky. They are going to be right. emotional and they are going to take it out on us. So this candle is for us as well, John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like we're single-handedly responsible for some of these decisions. <laughs> we are responsible for all of it, right? No, but sorry. I have to say, you know, this whole thing that they still get the quotes from Orser about Yuzu, when it's clear that for Ghislaine, bigger involvement. Also, Brian is not good at the bullshit interviews. Can we, like, he tries to be Tarasova and he's just not. Just that Eeyore- well, I kind of like that he called it out. He's like, yo, I don't think he used the word Joe. He was like, Hanyu is his own man, his own athlete. He's got a plan. We're here to help him if and when he needs us. That's so like defer deferential, but yeah, come on. Everybody yeah. needs a coach. We saw right. this with Michelle Kwan. We see it time and time again. But he said, you know, fast forward four years, we were in the same situation. You have to talk to him about his expectations for the Olympics. Ooh. And his expectations for training and recovery and to recuperate from this injury. That means, I don't know. I don't know what he can do. Uh, 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 and well, and to be wrath. fair, he doesn't want the wrath of the Fanyu. He is lighting a candle as well with every time he opens his mouth. Yeah, I don't have a lot of details, and I'm not going to speculate. Or, you know, this is a question for Yuzu and what his intentions are, and then we as team have to all stand behind him, whatever his intentions are for the season. We all know that he wants to do the quad axle, and if anyone will do it, he can do it. There was, you know, a change a little bit in his technique for the jump, and he has been able to work on that. So you'll have to sit and wait and see, me included. He doesn't need to lean on a coaching team to direct him. I don't believe that. Uh, he knows what he's doing. He's a two-time Olympic champion and a two-time world champion, and he's won everything now. So we stand behind him and support him. We all trust his instincts and the direction he wants to go. So that's a lot of nothing that he just told us. And um, other than we support him. It was a lot of dodging. It was a lot, a lot of dodging. You know, you know that unfortunately, like someone like Brian is really cornered in these interviews. I'm sure the question was, what are your expectations for him at the Olympics? And he's like, whoa, not my, not my you have question to, say to something. answer. You're in trouble if yeah. you don't answer. You're in trouble if you do answer. Right. That's a tough one. Listen, the quad axle coming off of an ankle injury about a time, 27 years old, right? I mean, not easy. So, so it'll be this. If you are a Hanyu, and let's say we, we've taken the quad axle off of the table because it's, it's too risky uh, physically, is it worth it to you to compete in a third Olympics and get a medal, be a part of a team medal for your country, the first one you've ever had? Is it, is it all dependent? Is anything less than gold a failure to you? Or would you enjoy walking away with a silver or a bronze and helping your team achieve something historic. That's sort of the question I think posed to him. And I, of course, admire his skating and his contribution to the sport and his country. So I would love to think that just being on a podium and helping his team could be a real motivating factor. Uh, but maybe anything less than the top is deemed a failure. I don't know how he would view that or how I would view it in this situation. Oh, yes and no, right? I think that you have to mourn the injury, mourn the loss of, you know, what you potentially hope to accomplish on one hand, and then you have to change your mindset. And I think we saw with Patrick Chan, it took him a bit in the last time, right. but I really think that he has always been so behind Japan. We've seen from the earthquake, we've seen over the years, and, and his country is so important to him and how they've supported him and he wants to support them back. I think that you, do come around and shift your mindset and be, let's get this team medal and let's do yeah. that. Yeah, and Patrick is a perfect leader, example. Yeah, With him as the absolute leader, and I think that you pass the torch on to the next skaters. Because you know what, without him, we saw Yuma in the short program here, we see the inconsistency of Shoma Uno. Without Yuzu, I don't know that they could get the team medal. They mm. need him. They yeah, they absolutely do. Yeah. Need his energy, his leadership, his performance ability. And I think he could have a great moment at the Olympics. So mm -hmm. put him in a short program, nailing it like he does to the Chopin or something like that. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Like classic, classic Hanyu. Right. Oh, no, you know, I think really hard to beat. Yeah. And wow. You know, 
let him throw the quad axle if he wants to in the individual event or whatever. But yeah. Or remind us how beautiful the quality of his skating is. Even, you know what I mean? Even without a quad lutz flip or axle, show us the beauty of a well-executed quad loop and quad sao cow like that with these e extravagant transitions and musicality. It, it, I, I want to see it at the Olympics. Even, even if the technical numbers aren't what he's hoping, I, I just want to see it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I, uh, you know, I don't know. I want to see it, but I think we will. Gut says we will. Okay. But, uh, I hope you're, I hope you're right. Also, <laughs> there was this whole nonsense going on on sports.ru this week about Julian made a joke that Tukdemishiva should get bonus points for being old. So they called everyone. She in should. Russia. She should. <laughs> Team Two Breeds that was posting about uh, people on a subway, uh, you know, uh, you know about like <laughs> letting the elder have the seat. Basically, I mean, this this became such a ridiculous non news story. But you just have to laugh about. Well, and also they were publishing Megan's article where she was like, "Are you kidding? The whole world's rooting for Tukdemishiva right now." It's true. And I think there's something to that. She's right. Yeah. She is, yeah. So, well, before we discuss uh, the event in Italy, this, this Canadian sectionals are going on right now. Yesterday, the short program, you know, the, the Canadian women, people talk about Kaya Ruder, they talk about uh, Maddie Skizas. Maddie coming back after. A rough, you saw the Canadian ladies in Skate Canada, not their day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lovely program yesterday. But Gabby Dillman, you know, for the first two thirds of that short program was in it and then doubled the Lutz, but the triple triple. But remember was... that the first, but remember the triple triple is a toe loop, toe loop, and then a double axle. So again, we're, what we've seen, it's like, it reminds me of when Paulina came back and it was like through the loop. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, we, we just haven't seen her sort of tackle this flip lot situation. I agree. I also think she looked more like Gabby than she has in the last three years. Because for a while, that triple toe, triple toe was eluding her. Yeah. And it was, it was the strongest triple toe, triple toe we've seen from her. But also the technique in general. Uh, yeah. I'm curious to see what she can do in the free, but she's making it interesting, as we knew she would, okay? <laughs> she is fighting for this Olympic spot. She's got a couple of months. The do one you think anyone wants... can really take it away from Maddie, though? Because it's a one-spot situation, right? Depends. You know, Maddie is lovely. She is a little feisty, but she does have that Jennifer Robinson, like, sweet quality where Gabby Dalman is a street fighter. Except Jennifer Robinson was always finishing top ten at things like the Olympics. And I don't really see that possible. Nowadays, it's hard yeah. to you know, different eras in different fields, right? Yeah. yeah. Maddie Skies is a better skater than Jennifer Robinson, okay? These are well, remember, remember when we judged the old worlds and it was like, Jenny's getting married. So this is a program about what it's like to get married. And I was like, well, I'm glad we're not dealing with those programs anymore. <laughs> how many jumps Victoria Volchkova popped? Those Russian ladies of today aren't doing it. It's a different time, right? I know. Yeah. Victoria, she was breaking my heart back then. She breaks my heart still. <laughs> you know, it's a different time. But uh, it is. It is. Listen, Gabby is the one with the X factor. It's a long shot. It's uh, mm -hmm. not perhaps the most likely, uh, but she's keeping it alive. And I think. But if you're Canada and you're you're like you see that you could hold on to a medal by a thread, I don't know that you're going with Gabby for that team event. I think you need someone a little bit more reliable. And in this instance, that does mean Maddie. I think. I think. Yes, of course. So. But yeah, individually, so, I think Gabby. Well, could be out of the higher. Ghetto. You never know. I mean, things could happen. Things change right. by the day. So. Right. Um, you know, you put a team of Keegan. Piper and Paul, KMT, and Maddie skis us together. You're like, okay, okay maybe, maybe. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, but I think Japan, Japan has this momentum. And I think it was really the pairs um, event at Skate America that sort of really made me realize how much Japan was on top of this. Yeah. So, yeah. I think, listen, you have a team with Hanyu, Daisuke, 
the Japanese bear, uh, Kaori Wakaba. What, I mean, come on, that's exciting. That's yeah, yeah. It's a bunch of stars. Yeah, let the stars align. Okay, I mean, that's, <laughs> it, yeah. And just nice to see a switch up on that team podium. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be, it'll, look, it went, it wasn't such an exciting event before. I'm excited for this team event now. I'm like ready right. to go. Right, because normally we know ahead of time, it's pretty predetermined a lot of times just based on the well-roundedness of each country. But, but really there are some question marks that make it much more interesting. My interest is peaked. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's discuss, let's start with the ladies here. Uh, this was interesting. Uh, short program results luna hendrix having such a moment and winning the short program winning a bronze overall so emotional lovely I loved it. yeah I was brother yorick in many respects the skater of, of the weekend she's really uh a, i think a skater that many people are getting behind because the russians have had such a stranglehold on world domination of skating they have such a stranglehold on europeans to even see someone from a small country come through with solid technique and nice skating. Everyone is behind this girl. Everyone and is a, wo a woman among a woman. girls. Yeah. Yeah. Say, say, so because also when we say, or when I think of like Russian domination, there's the Atiri domination, what represents a younger, different type of skater as opposed to a Chukdamishima. And I think that again, Julen, whatever, but like this idea of a woman on the ice is, it creates a different feeling in the jumps, in the programs. And I think Lena has that. And it's I think there's something so alluring. You know, jumps yeah. from her legs, big jumps. Yeah. Not these whippy things that we see. By the way, mm -hmm. I see adult skaters trying to learn like the tech. I'm like, do they even know that like this technique is for like Anna Sherbakova? Like what? I yeah, like people who are 18 have aged out of this technique. So as an adult skater, I don't know that I would be trying to emulate it. Yeah. You know what? You just have to shut your mouth and let everyone manage their own career. Yeah, yeah we all okay. make choices. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, you don't know, but watching it, it, very interesting to see. I like her. I like. I, I do too. Her. I'm rooting for her in many ways. Yeah. yeah. I, I want sometimes a little bit of a better music edit here or there, but I like her. I like the skating. I, I like her. Yeah, she something about the whole skating. thing is dated for good and bad. Like it's a little bit nostalgic, even the like packaging and the music and the whole thing is a little bit dated, but in a way that brings me back to an era where I liked skating in the ladies programs a little bit more. So. It's interesting, you know, her brother, York, used to like messages to be like, oh, will you share my sister's video, which was always like very sweet. And at the time he was the bigger deal and she's completely out yeah. and accomplished him in many respects. And, and yeah. it's great to see him always supporting her. So I think it's yeah. uh, really nice to see. That's a great family article uh, coming your way on the Olympic channel for uh, the uh, right. upcoming season. But she's someone to root for and someone yeah. to know. And I think everyone is behind her. Yes, it's judges included. Yeah. Judges didn't have to go with her in the short, but well, they chose to. It's hard to not be behind her. You know, I think when you see the difference in the skating and the skating size, speed, right. Power, coverage, jumps, yeah. uh, communication, joy. You know, she just likes what she's doing and right. not the most proficient technically compared to the other ladies out there, you know, who are doing quads and these ultra C. But she's, she's throwing out her triple triples, you know, in, in the second yeah. half, things like that. Yeah, she's doing what she has to do. So, yeah, yeah. I think there's a big, um, the judges are ready to to reward something different when it when it becomes available. Yeah. So, and I think I think we saw that even a little bit in the short in Skate Canada, for instance, when some of the judges, like three, four judges, took the opportunity to put Tamisheva first in the short. Mm -hmm. I think they're they're trying. They're trying yeah. to send a message that yes, this is winning, but we do kind of like this other style. So yeah. Yeah. I agree. Uh, no. Anna Sherbakova, the master and the margarita. <laughs> no, very interesting to watch. In the short program, you know, missed her takeoff for the loop, swung that leg around and did a double toe. That's why she's a champion. Okay. Right. Missed the combination, stayed present and fought. Now, granted, big error. 
right. for points. Coach obviously not going to be thrilled. She's not going to be thrilled. But she did tack on something and got right enough to keep her in it. Yeah, that's impressive. Okay, yeah. um, and came back for the free when it really didn't look. She didn't have a great practice that morning. Our good friend Leonardo Buonomo, our uh, you know, he was there at the practices watching. He said that they all looked nervous. Uh, they weren't skating great. You know, we had seen her do a run through with falls in a days earlier, but. Listen, when she has to, when the chips are down, she delivers. And and again, a quad flip that we did not see at Worlds. You know what I mean? I, I really didn't know we were going to see this element from her again. And so to see her do it blew my mind. Yeah. She, she really cool. can pull it out. I was reading yesterday that the composer of her short program doesn't like how Danny G edited random music together. He wants to write something so that it's a cohesive... Well, th that's the thing, like sometimes we're razzing about these cuts or these edits and it's like people can help you. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't have to deter, like let let the composer help you make this great. Absolutely. I, I don't, yeah. Absolutely not. Okay. Yeah. But I don't get, listen, the master and the margarita. That's a lot of novel to put in four minutes. I. And people will be like, oh, she does it perfectly. You know, Russian, Russian, <laughs> oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. <laughs> you see what you want to see sometimes, right? right? It, ain't that the truth? <laughs> There's a lot of this going on, so you're not looking at her free like legs. Yeah. Yes. I mean, lovely upper body. I would go back to last year's program when it comes time to the Olympics, but mm. it's just, it, it elevates her more in my Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, and, it, and if your if your angle with her is going to be through PCS, help us give her that PCS. You know what I mean? With with some really elevated material. The music but is really challenging, uh, and yeah. the storyline and and that is challenging. But lovely skater. Interesting to see if she can maintain the quad flip. Maybe a second. Who knows what is possible? Yeah, in, in it was interesting to me that last season they were like, "Well, let's just do the flip." Because I was like, I didn't realize that would have been the strongest one for her that they chose to focus in on as opposed to the Lutz or the toe. But well, the toe, she hasn't really done ever since that, uh, the big injury. So yeah, I, don't, I mean, listen, she is full of surprises. I know, yeah, yeah. When after Budapest, like I had sort of all but thought, okay, she's made way for Chukchamishava on this. And the team. coaches, I, you know, we're not sure. But right. I think she surprises them in one respect. I think they know what she's capable of under pressure. But when you see, we're not seeing it in practice. And then, you know, you know how hard someone is working, but you don't see the percentages. But then you see it, you know, then you're like, right. well, right. listen, her career <laughs> was hanging on by a thread going to that free program. After, you have to think about it, losing to Maya in Budapest, in the short program here, she needed to deliver. And she comes yes. out out of this Grand Prix looking like a mental giant. Right. And looking like the champion, you know, yeah. in respect and someone who should be in the team event, someone who should... Uh, be well, because again, it, it, with some of these skaters, we see um, judges begrudgingly go with them. They just pushed her right to the front. They, they really do get behind her in yeah. the PCS, even in the short. Her PCS was quite, quite high. Quite high, yeah. yeah. So... Yeah. Now, how about Maya here? You know, this is uh, kind of a girl that it, she improves a little bit every week that we see She's her. She's one then, conversely, coming off of that judge's conversation. She's one I think the judges begrudgingly go with. They're like, well, damn it. Okay, she gave us these two quads. we got to put her forward. They're not giving her extra help with their marks. She doesn't have anything wow. Other than, you know, she doesn't have that natural element, the natural spiral, the natural communication with the music, then it's all getting better. It all gets better mm -hmm. week to week, but she's, she wasn't born with Unsu or Marin Honda, like charisma. Natural gifts. Yeah, exactly. She's working it. You know, she's not Coaster Naya giving you the drama on the ice or the, the But sack. it's almost more inspiring sometimes that way to see someone like, this is always that book I refer to called Talent is Overrated. Like, again, maybe not the most naturally talented, but like her work ethic has got her places I don't know that people expected her to get. And that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, 
she has said that she doesn't have the triple axel yet, but that she needs it. And I believe her. <laughs> and I, I think that they will try to throw it. Listen, she does it right off of a toe, uh, off of a toe pick on that quad toe. I think that they could fake an entrance and get something to... Uh... Well, I'm also intrigued because we were seeing her, they were alternating for a while. And then of course, when she had that big um, breakthrough moment in the spring at that Russian event, she did the sow and the toe but it seems now they're just going toe, right? She did two quad toes. I think anything is possible. Yeah, I, I'm surprised they haven't thrown in the salad. Listen, I mean, maybe she makes the final, maybe she goes for it, right? Like you never know what is gonna happen. I think we've seen with this camp, they will throw it at the big moment. Listen, yeah. they would love and to I have skaters. Bias like, against, um, uh, Sherbakova again in the next one. So I, I think she's at least going to come out with two silvers. Yeah. That puts her in the final. Yeah. So it'll be interesting. You know, with Trusova out, will Terry still sweep the Grand Prix? You don't know. Uh, right. I, anything is possible. There's momentum with Tukdemisheva. There's lots of things happening. That's who will throw it. I could see, I could see a Tukdemisheva three, Maya four. Listen, with Trusova out, they could all make the final, potentially. Right. Right? right. <laughs> yeah. No, you could make it. I mean, you never know. It's uh, That's true. Yeah. Would love to see it. Uh, you know, how about the other ladies here? You know, what? You again, know? I think Mai is making a real strong case. Goes mm -hmm. out every time again. Just clean as can be. Lovely. Does her job. Satoko, they're still absolutely helping in any way they can. I'm surprised. The skating is so lovely. And in that so heel, beautiful. sorry to kick yeah. I just I just wanted to explain. It's just so lovely. Yeah. It's amazing. Amazing. I, I I don't know what happened to her at Worlds. Like if she had skated this way at Worlds, I think it would have changed a lot of perspective. I really thought that Worlds signified something was finished. So even though I know obviously she's still struggling and they're still under rotated things like this, but it's, it doesn't give me that alarming feeling that the world's performances did. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. She seemed to try to improve the jumps and that almost made it worse. And now they're mm -hmm. just going back to what works. It seems like you could see it in the flip and the toe. And I mean, obviously I think that they're trying, but I don't think, I think they're using what she knows more or who knows? Yeah. I mean, that's just, you know, pure speculation. Who knows without, the Tosca program is so gorgeous. The short program mm -hmm. is so gorgeous. The Lyra Angelica uh, exhibition is so gorgeous. That could also be the short program. I mean, we could bring that back. Right. I'm here for it. Um, yeah. It's so lovely. It's iconic skating. I want her, listen, Jonathan, we need a synchro team. Satoko, Captain, Unsu. <laughs> Oh my God, uh, talk to me tonight. about Unsu. Marin, With, you know. Yes, all of our, well, or again, that like solo dance idea, like also yeah. I'm, I'm maybe behind that even more, but um, Unsu, when she came out for this short program, gave me such hope. She gave me such that glimmer of hope in those, like we were talking about Gabby at sectionals, first two thirds of this program, I was like, I see energy. I saw a triple triple that seemed organized and had technical, um, you know, perspective to it. And you know, she just has that thing. Mm -hmm. You cannot deny her that. It was even more than anyone else there. I was like, this is the person that I am drawn to. And, and of course, then just more of the same with the issues, but. Did you think that maybe she was going to turn it around? I don't know. Something about her jump seems so much more organized initially in that show. I love her so much. Talk, the best packaging we've ever seen, right? In, in the short program, the free program looks like Grandma Lisa's drapes, so I, I can't. But <laughs> the flip has always been a rough jump for her. And mm -hmm. Sal, remember, going in the free, there's a point where she's got the most gorgeous music, and then it seems like do you like skating? I don't know if this is torture yeah. for you or you like at this at this point, this is like a bad exercise. But you know, Jeff Buttle choreographed, I believe that the free program used to be in. I want to make sure I have that right because I'll get screamed at. Um, how dare you? <laughs> but she exuded that yeah. energy Jeffrey in Buttle. the short. Jeffrey Buttle okay. choreographed this, right? He had a Michelle Kwan fan page. And I know that this is a different system, but there are times when the music is just at its absolute climax, when Michelle's doing the falling leaf. And Unsu is just deadpan. 
and she just yeah. doesn't have any life in the, the last end of the program. I don't know if it's a training issue, if it's a belief issue, but the last several seasons have been very rough for a skater who was on such an upward path and then it all came, you know, really crashing down. And I don't know, it was just, it's, it's hard to watch because you could see with the triple triple that it's there. The talent is there, the packaging is there. She's got the right look. And it's still kind of possible. Like the, the combo in the short made me think like, it's not, it's not without, it's not too far from her reach if she really wanted it, it seems. But if you're a federation and you're a judge and you're at this point in the Olympic season and Unsu is performing like this, were you not gonna, whether you know it or not, be like, I'm gonna give the benefit of the doubt to Young Yu. I'm gonna give it to Yi Lim. I'm gonna, you know, right? Highland Lee was lovely in Canada. I mean, they have the depth the that they don't actually need. Drusova at a US International Figure Skating Classic. Right. Delivering, reliable, unsu. Right. Ah, you know. Yeah, all the gifts, gifts, all the natural gifts. And yeah. I would be frustrated. Yeah. So, uh, come on. That's human nature. Um, Yilin Kim, lovely, but um, after, again, after the most brilliant triple X combos. Triple Those yeah. combos are amazing. Yeah, and fast. And such a great season going into the world last year. And then I don't know what the answer is. I don't know what the problem is. I mean, it looks, mm -hmm. always looks very hardworking. Found more spark last season than we knew was there. Went from right. being the Maria Sotskova to well, being like, wow, that you yeah. nah, on that triple lutz, triple toe. Don't know, but perplexing and, and disappointing, you know, I'm sure for her and for us, because we want her to do well now. Now we've right. seen what she's capable of, and we're like, okay, all right. You, and it's an interest, it's an interesting national team they have going on there. You a lot know? of that. A lot yeah. of that portends for the future. A lot of good things coming for South Korea, right? Yeah. I mean, someone's going to hit. You have right. that much depth and that much work ethic to try to make this. Someone is going to hit if they don't have to do too many ranking competitions. You know, that's the <laughs> only thing. Like literally the hours before Worlds. <laughs> Federation gets in its own way. I think. Yeah. And that's yeah. what we have seen. But yeah. Well, how about the men. This was quite... Uh, well, wait, let's ride this wave of Korea because Jun Wah Cha was someone oh, okay. that I always really enjoyed when he first came on the yes. scene, doing that Romeo and Juliet, that kind of funky thing. There was kind of this like flippancy to his body language that I kind of liked. And in the short program here, I was reminded of why I liked him so much. And in the free program, I was like, oh, right. And I remember that there are some inherent limitations going on here, too. When he hits that quad sow, he has a way about his body movement that can be so wonderful to watch. But so for everything that I thought he achieved in the short, it was sort of lacking in the, in the free. And so it's, it's a about. talent, I believe. In. Yes! Who, let's just take a moment and let's applaud your layback video which not only included Belita, the love of my life and early skating, but also actual footage of the Ina Bauer skating and her spins were gorgeous. I had never seen her skating live. Well, or, I, or, I, 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 in video. Skate. I told him what I was doing ahead of time and asked his input. And Listen, because the first video is so hard. You do a video like this, right? And people are like, why didn't you put this person to where they're tagging it? Then the people right. are tagging themselves and like, Oh my God, this is, it was supposed to be a celebration of something and not meant to offend anyone, right? Yeah, like, not a so ranking. Funny. Yeah, exactly. But, and then people are like, well, why do we have this person in and this? And I'm not going to say, well, I think that they're good, but maybe not this, right? You don't want to get into that discussion. So no one asked for a 45 minute layback video. You know? <laughs> Other channels do stuff all the time. It was supposed to be one, a history and two, an interest and an appreciation. And you, yeah. you know, there's always someone you're gonna leave out. I'm like, oh, Catherine Healy. Oh, that was the one where I'm like, right. you know, but she's gonna be in this viral video. You know, and people are like, why not this person? Well, it's more of a variation than this. Yes, right. you right. know, it's, it's what it but is. But I, lo I like, love- Michelle Kwan in the person. layback video. Let's be honest, Jonathan. No. The position when she brought the leg down was very nice, but it was easier. 
still not iconic, though very it nice. It was a thing. problem solving move. Yeah. Yes. It was 911. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, I love Michelle, love you the most. And I think Michelle would get it and not think that she deserved to be in that video. See if you I, in the spiral video. See you see in the you spiral there. video. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you know what, Michelle, if it were ranking, I'd put you ahead of Sasha, whose lovely spiral position was on a flat. Okay, let's, <laughs> let's call it. Room Did for you? both, room for both, yeah. Yes, it was the e both. It was the Ina Bauer herself footage that I found very intriguing. And of course, you know, again, any anything that exposes Belita, I'm a, I'm How a, about Laurence Owen doing a layback, change foot layback at the 1960 Olympics? Sensational. With Dick calling it a backbend spin. <laughs> <laughs> we were still working out the terms, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. And That's Cecilia funny. Coolidge, who had that ballet teacher and that mother who forced her to learn that very bending position and she still lost to that Sonia Henny because of Papa Henny. All right, that diary. Politics. If we were covering it then. <laughs> yeah. Cecilia. <laughs> I'm supporting you. Okay. We see you. We see you. Yeah. You also <laughs> read any of those Belita quotes about Sonia Henney and her team. She let it be known. Big fan. It was all a racket. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. Okay. But yes, in full circle to say, June Watt, yes, beautiful Ina Bauer. And yet still, the triple axel, people want to see that more. People like jumps, but then they want the layback video, but then they watch the jumps, you know? And then literally, mean? literally included like more clips of Hanyu than other skaters. And the fans will be like, you didn't include the right ones. You couldn't have picked worse ones. <laughs> da, 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 da. And I'm like, he did a quad step triple axel in a competition. That was the novelty was of that. Yeah, okay. that's insane. That's why we included you, it. That's when you're like, I hope that you take all of this angst and channel it into your own video. I look forward to seeing it. Yeah. <laughs> It is what it's just meant to be fun. It's meant to make people love skating. Yeah. Like you say, a celebration. Yeah. So wasn't that the name of Beverly Smith's book? Yes. Figure yes. Skating. Okay. Okay. There it is. It's meant to be fun. It's the Olympic year. Yeah. Things are so serious. Let's yeah. remind Let's enjoy skating. Yeah. yeah. It's all positive, you know? If not doing a montage of falls, okay? Other no. channels, you know, we would get killed, Jonathan. People would Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, or remember all, those horrible ones where it's like pair skating is dangerous and they just would put up all these like upsetting falls. It's it's terrible. Yeah. Can't do that today. Day and age. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's not funny. So what you can do is come back from seventh to win the whole event. You can. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the costume. It's as though they watched Alexa Yagudin gladiator program, but took his man in the Iron Mask costume. I mean, you gotta love it. That's right, that's right. Or I was gonna say like they took his man in the mask costume and like ran it through the wash too many times because it was a little bit like more subtle and like fake. Yes, I want the a little more bronzier on it. Yeah. I love the costume, I love the costume. I think it needs a little more color of, mm. uh, of that Pop. fake metallic, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This, okay. I'm Were you worried for him after the short? Yeah, yes and yes and no. Okay, I worry for any skater who has a breakout moment when they start to compete the next season, I want for them to succeed and build on. Mm -hmm. Because I think mentally when you have the months off and then you're out of program shape and getting back into program shape and then you have the pressure of competing, I always worry for anyone. This is back from the days of Caroline Zhang and Mariah and the Junior Grand Prix after Junior World, right? You just want someone to over, to step over that mental hurdle and keep it going because it's so hard. When you, now you have pressure, now people are looking at you. And maybe you achieved just a little more than what people expected, maybe what you expected, right? I just, yeah. I root for anyone in that situation. So when so someone like Yuma has a bad short, I'm like, I hope they just come out and kill it in the frame. I yes. hope they do it, right? Yeah. You know, so that in a sense, because I think that we've seen, you know, throughout many sports and other things where the sophomore slump happens or, you know, you, this, 
gets into that situation. And that's when it's easy for that imposter syndrome to creep in. Yeah. And it was that, oh, you start to believe yourself it was a fluke. I don't know, for some reason, although I was sad for him that, but about the short program, it seemed like a fluke. Like I, I still sort of had the confidence. I'm like, nah, I still think he's in it for an Olympic medal. I'm sure he's gonna come back tomorrow and nail it, which of course he did. Uh, I just felt like the short was indeed a one and done, just weird out of his body moment. It's so interesting to see. Let's just have a moment about like men, versus these ladies. Remember when Terry said that the men are just not as tough? It's she was just, right. <laughs> we are just like emotional and not as ready for the competition, right? Every year on the Grand Prix, this happened since the days of Lambiel. Remember at Escape Canada, he was sitting in the stands as he won the event because he was in the first group. Yeah, like the ladies, Anna Sherbakova, she's out there like, I am gonna win, right? Every yeah. moment, stick tacking on. Men! Ah, we see Nathan, yeah. Man, this one. Ah. Kolya da, Kolya da yeah. with a silver medal. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, These totally men different. These were not cut out for that same level. On one hand, on one hand. On the other hand, what they're doing is so incredible. So amazing. Of course, of course. Right. But like even we've talked about it, some of the cool. challenger events already this year, we're like the silver medal in the men's event does not equal the silver medal in the ladies event because everything that the ladies were putting out was 10 times yes. the effort and cleanliness as the men. Yeah. yeah, it's just so intriguing. Um, his skating is no fluke. His technique right. is no fluke. Um, it's the real deal. And and hopefully, you know, you look at Japan and turn in the tide. I think you know, hopefully, every competition builds. And I mean, this is someone, a potential future superstar of skating. Yes, I agree. I agree. Needs a little bit better music. I think the Michael Bublé is cheap. I do. I think he's better than it. I think they're trying yeah. to inject personality and showmanship and teach him to connect with an audience. And it's just Fine. an easy... Yeah, yeah. This is a stepping stone, I think. Like, because again, I think they have big picture in mind. I like the heel at the end, you know, yeah. but not the good short. Yeah, but, I, but the free made me a believer. And yeah. came through those triple axles at the end of the program, so difficult. And the air position is so lovely. It's just yeah. so nice to watch. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. They, I, they've got a big group coming up with Shinsato, who had these, I know he was injured at Skate America, but that beautiful like air position. Even Timono here was like, oh my goodness. Some nice moments. Suzuki Timono, who we've loved for mm -hmm. a long time. <sighs> He's so frustrated. He could be on the same yeah. pro team with Mar and, and goes right. to not <laughs> bad girl club, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, Satoko being the one to keep everyone in line. Um, right. <laughs> he is so interesting because he has a relationship with the music. He seems to really love skating, but the inconsistencies have been a real problem. Three gorgeous quads. Mm -hmm. Level one flying sip. And then the I know, and almost laughing through it because he knows he's throwing it away. Yeah, they set it up with three axle passes, knowing that he might be a little inconsistent and need the extra one to do a double or a triple or a, or a pop or like what is happening. Yes, I was curious to ask you that. Is one of them just normally a planned double, just in case? I mean, because that was any, three in a row. This had like Todd Elbridge. One of them vibes. would be a double. In, yeah. In the case. Yeah. Yeah. Like, okay. I think it it looked very open ended, Jonathan. Right. Yeah. To me, it looked like he was planning three triple axles and was going to take whichever ones he got. Okay. Yeah, yeah. let's just see what sticks. <laughs> With the Rowan spaghetti at the wall. I mean, right. yeah. yeah. And then remember O to O, how like oh, nobody right. was so focused. And then, yeah. Yeah. Suzuki, at the end of La La Land, this comes alive. And at one point, just like playing musical instruments, a little bit of a curious edit, Misha, little curious. Correct. Correct. Yeah. But fun. But fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? Yeah. Honey, honey, what's going on here? What, what's happening? What is this all about? This is what's going on here. <laughs> uh, yeah. But I loved it. Just, he's an infectious skater. Yes. Want him to do well. Don't think it's going to happen beyond one season, maybe. But we've seen yeah. things in Japan. Uh, remember, like, when, like, I mean, we've seen a lot of skaters, like, the Firebird, all of a sudden in 2014, come out of nowhere. You know? Machida, yeah, like those, yeah. those, some of those Machida moments, especially at always a Skate America. His Olympics was always at a Skate America. And then it would just give these like, historical performances. 
Yeah. You know, yeah. Incredible. So, you know, you hope with Kazuki that that kind of happens one time. It would be nice because a lovely skater. I don't think it's going to happen for Dmitry Aliyev, Jonathan. He said he's dealt with some... What is happening? I mean, it was just sort of like all the things that I loved so much about him have just continually faded and faded and faded. And now it's like glacial skating. He still has that inherent ability to open his chest in a beautiful move, but I, I just, it, he's just throwing it away. And there's enough people in between him and Kolyada that like six people will, will be vying to take his spot. Uh, and I, he's just seemingly giving it away. So it's a bit unfortunate to see, but, but yeah, the, the, the boat has sailed. The How ship is Cecilia, you know, been a Lambiel skater for a long time. The Romeo and Juliet, the programs just always seem uninspired to me. And he spends so much time with Lambiel. The technique is good enough The everything is, it just doesn't break through. Although fourth place is a good finish for him here, but. Well, and they're sort of branding the him people. as a Jason type. And very early on, you really thought there was this like inherent performance. It was sort of like a Donovan where they they may not be the most competitive, but for some reason, all the fans are really drawn to this person. And I don't know that they've really gone anywhere with it. The hair it's is just sort of, no, it is not. And from afar, you're like, oh, it's a ponytail. And then up front, you're like, oh, it's disheveled and all over the place. I don't know. I don't know. I'm working too hard as an audience member to get get the message. Yeah. How about Jin Bo Yang? I was thinking about this earlier this morning. Since we've done the skating lesson, Jin has always been in the mix. And I even when he's out of it, he comes back for a short program. When and he it, does and that, that short program made you think he was really in it, didn't he? Sort of. And then the free, and you're like, you know, usually the judges, when someone has that much inconsistency, will start to lower the PCS, but they still appreciate his jumping ability. When he is able to deliver it, they can't deny it. I don't know of any man who can jump higher. Plus Kolyada and Yuma gave him every gave them every opportunity to support. Yeah, him. here you go, Jim. Enjoy your short program win. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. But that quad lutz, I mean, it is, he could, he could jump over Nathan while doing the quad lutz. I, I mean, it is insane the height he gets on that. I don't know if that's part of why he has such difficulty holding on to these landings but even early on you know with surprise bronze medal with the you know he's always been a threat because of the height of these jumps and again when he delivered that short i thought if he decides to be consistent at one competition and it's the olympics he could really mix things up here but that's a big ask for him right now with that consistency yeah. i mean it always kind of was but especially now the the wear and tear on his his body must be great and on your soul. Listen. I know, right? I mean, I, yeah, I love Hanyan so much. I don't know. I know, I just, and those triple axles and that's those skating skills and, but your heart breaks because an artist like that, you know when their heart is in it and when it is not. And unfortunately it seems like he's been pressured to perform at times when his heart is not in it, so. I love him so much. I love him so I much. <laughs> I know. But another one that has all the technical content at times to throw a wrench in it is Daniel Grossel. Oh, yeah, and don't forget the mouth. Like, those were some unusual replays. You know, yeah. he's so handsome, right? Right? Then you see that, then you see you see the replays and it looks like you're where you're watching that movie mask with Cher and Estelle Getty. And you're like, what's happening? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. For someone who is so handsome, he does, he does strike a, a decidedly unhandsome air position facial. He needs to lead into <laughs> it and like post something on Instagram being in on the job. Listen, this kid, you can tell from his Instagram, he has loved skating and jumping and, you know, has tried to improve artistically. It's not his gift. The short I find is is a pretty decent vehicle for him. Um, it it it's less convincing in the long, of course. But again, this is some. You think he's Nureyev? That... You think he's Nureyev, the white crow? Hold on, I didn't say it was a success. I said it was a better vehicle. <laughs> when comparing the short to the long, I think they hide more in the short than in the long. But again, the loop, the flip, the lots, like he has, he's had these goods. They're just, they've just not quite organized themselves. But if he decides to organize himself on the right day, 
again, he's going to be in the mix. I watching that free program and seeing what he's capable of technically, I thought this is a kid. It's going to be hard to keep him off of a world podium one day. It's Correct. just going to come together one day. The numbers, you're not going to be able to fight those numbers at some point. Well, just yeah. Yeah. I mean, at some yeah. point, this is the kind of skater, especially when you look at how inconsistent those Russian men are, call it up. This is someone at a post-Olympic world after, wow, it, it, yeah. will, it will happen. And most likely, so. If it doesn't, and again, Carol Carr lady didn't predict it, but I don't know. <laughs> we'll have to ask her to run his numbers, but yeah, I don't know. Do his card. Because, because even Kolya Da, like, again, the Schindler's List doesn't pack the emotional wallet for me like other Schindler's List programs has, but every position, I, again, you could not draw a, a male model in a more beautiful spin position or with better. Hamill is so coach. stunning on Kolya Da. Oh my God. The triple axle is so gorgeous, everything. He needs to go back to the Norea. It is the Olympic program. The Schindler's List just is a little tepid for him in the emotional mm -hmm. impact, especially no. that he's portraying Schindler. But what you don't get is when Schindler wishes that he could have saved so many more people. At the end. And like, the program never gets- It leases. Yes, it never yeah. releases. It stays this. And I don't know that that's necessarily because of the jumping is benefited from that versus the openness or whatever. But even in the short, you know, the Nutcracker, I don't mind it as a music choice. He has a couple of really beautiful balletic moments. But again, these jumps that you know he can do in his sleep. So, so funny. Mishin said that if he landed one more jump cleanly, he would have won the event, perhaps. Um, I, because of Yuma short, yes, yeah, he, he's right. Yeah. Woulda, coulda, shoulda, but so funny. Right. So Chris Shipley had a, a lesson with Olga, Ganesha Valetova, you know, this weekend, mm -hmm. this weekend, they were like, oh, this is a Mishin exercise. We like Mishin. And I just thought like every time I see Mishin, I'm like, we like Mishin. We like him. We do like him, you know. His mask wearing, not so much, but we like Mishin. Yeah, what mask wearing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he does have yeah. a real godfather energy to him like marlon yeah. brandon-esque but that's yeah. also not so performative that's actually settled yeah. he seems so settled at the ice at, at, at the boards for his skaters i really like it yeah we love we like we, <laughs> we like we like and it's again character. of course we still harp on the consistency of koliada but this is the closest koliada has ever been so in that respect mishin has has made Kolyada the most consistent he has been. It's just unfortunately still inconsistent. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I, I the judges want to... want to give this kid the world, and I would too. Go back to the Norea. Sense. How do we get Tatiana yeah. Tarasova to start yelling about this in the press? Stop talking about Julin's age thing and start talking about giving him the winning program back. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But again, all of it's for naught if he's if he's not gonna deliver the goods. He's dressed like a literal nutcracker in the short, and I don't care. He looks great, okay? I know, it's getting to the other music. That's what's so fascinating, but okay. <laughs> um, love it, okay. What a men's event. With Yuma, I mean, let's just... I think Yuma's goal. still on track. I Like, uh, the short, I thought, oh, does this take Yuma out of the Olympic medal running for me? And I was like, no, I see him still vying yeah. for one of those spots. Now, how about this pair event? This is, uh, it was really about China being one and two for me. It was them yes, and everyone else. Okay. Correct. Correct. Um, and again, it was about suede landing both the sow and the toe in that free. Yes. But then, the, but then you think, oh no, did they peak too early? Did they peak too early? No. The lifts were like... When he was at the very last one, he was like, oh. Oh, you, she's she probably again. Again, on Facebook. She, you know, I love, I love her. I love her post. Did she do one of like one of her review things? Oh, of course, of course. Okay, you know, I, I didn't think so to much. seek it out. I know, because she, she's usually like-minded to, to a lot of the stuff we think. The Grand Premio d'Italia is over. I enjoyed watching it live on my TV. I always love when she likes it or doesn't like it, right? Yeah. Skating in general was rather disappointing, in my opinion. But luckily in every event, there were a few stars shining to brighten the competition. And the ladies, Anna Sherbakova, performed a wonderful program, which included a quad flip and seven triple jumps, all very well executed without any effort. But what I appreciated more was her elegance, the way she moves and glides on the ice, expressing her music. Really beautiful. 
I also like the program of Luna Hendricks. She turned out an excellent performance with well-executed jumps and beautiful spins, and she is very elegant and impressive. In the pair, as both the Chinese couples, Sui and Han, and Peng and Jin were breathtaking, I hardly survived watching some of their lips. Or, <laughs> That's true. Me as well, Sonia, and I'm not sure Correct. what we were saying, if there's reading between the lines or not. But, <laughs> and in the men, the program of Yuma Kagiyama was marvelous. The way he glides in the ice with deep edges at great speed is unbelievable. And all his jumps, be they quads or triples, just come out of the blue. Sonia, this is great writing. I know. He and expresses the music in such a way that you really live it yourself. Just great. So to conclude this short comment, I want to thank and congratulate the Italian Federation who organized this event in a very short time. And all the skaters who gave their best anyhow. The skaters were going to show up for a Grand Prix no matter what, but... Yeah, they were ready. <laughs> they just didn't know where they were booking a ticket to. Yeah. <laughs> but we love Sonia. We like we do. Sonia. The book is good. The book is good. And I mean, it's a little bit clumsy at times, that cracked ice book, because it's a translation. Um, but I, I found it very riveting. So. Yes. She really throws the shade at, at certain times. <laughs> but it was funny, like, and and again, it. It, as opposed to some of the scary lifts from like KMT at Skate Canada, the minute something went awry, you knew she felt safe. He just chucked her right back up, not once, but twice. But she, could, and he, she could literally go down two inches and lay on his head. Okay, just based on that. <laughs> when in doubt, yeah. And, and that's only a couple inches from the actual ice. Yeah, so she wouldn't fall that far, yeah. Jonathan, don't joke in that way. We're going to get in trouble. That's no, I just, I mean, it, it's the arbitrary. This is the most injured pair of all time. We have to protect them. Okay. We do, we do. Because I love them and I love what they stand for. For Pang and Jin, I keep just wondering, are they, are they going to have a Pang and Tang moment? I don't know. The sequel's never as good as the original, but... You never know. I have to say, I didn't really, I think it's the free that I'm thinking of. I didn't totally understand what's happening in that program. It was okay. a little bit modern. It was a little bit something specific, but I wasn't understanding any of it. But I appreciated that it had a point of view and was something different and was skated well. I just, it wasn't connecting with the material. Like it was one of those we talk about, maybe I needed program notes for it. Well, um, how about the short? And I messaged Hugo, who works to try to figure this out, because I was very confused. I said, why do Pung and Jin mix Moonlight Sonata and Alicia Keys? I feel like I'm missing something. Uh, yeah. Marie France the program. He said, I don't know much about the story behind the music strategy. It's a song Marie France liked. She wanted to use for a while for the Moonlight. Better ask Alicia Keys as it's from the album. Just the fact that you are asking is a proof that it's outside the box. True. Moonlight must have a special meaning for Alicia as she has used it at many occasions. So I see. So they it wasn't like they chose to meld it. Alicia Keys had chosen to meld it. Well, Alicia Keys is performed ball. I don't listen. I okay. don't. I'm no, missing yeah. something, but there's a thought process behind it. But yeah. The free was more confusing to me a bit. But again, I appreciated that they were clearly making an effort to do something. I just didn't understand it. Yeah, I don't know. They're lo but lovely, but lovely moments. Really, really lovely elements. And I, I mean, they're in there. How about Sweet and Han, this Bridge Over Troubled Waters? Is it the program? Is it the moment? I don't know. When John Legend comes in, it is. It, it does have, and some of the unique moves, like when they're doing their combo spin and she exits like, and her legs are up here and she's facing out and stuff like that. There are such unique moments to it. It's just not, it doesn't have gravitas to it. It, it's a very sentimental program. Does this um, mean so when, Chrissy Teigen like, tweeting all over the Olympics? I don't know, but uh, <laughs> yeah. but aren't they not married anymore? I, I love John Legend. I think he is absolutely outstanding. We saw him live at the Tonys, and he was amazing. Yeah. I think he's great. I, I think that part of it is a very successful portion. Yes. Um, yeah. I, I hope they win the Olympics. Quite frankly, I think they're even even still. It may not be the huge Olympic moment I'm looking for from them, but I still think they have the best material. I agree. No. Yes, uh, yeah, we'll have to see. Um, I, I, you know, if they only do one clean program a year, thank goodness they just let those lifts go down so we could save save the, <laughs> the improved consistency on the side-by-side -side yeah. jumps and we can manifest it going forward. But even with the jump issue, the judges like weren't so harsh. They could have been harsher if they wanted to, but I don't think anyone wants to be harsh with them because everyone's behind what they need. Mm -hmm. and what they stand for. So. 
Now, the other pairs I didn't think were on the same level of the Chinese. No. So I think we can just, they were also less, there. less than satisfying. You know? Yeah, yeah. I think these, these other pairs are less of a factor. Yes. Uh, and, and require less of a, a magnifying lens approach. Yes. Now, how about the ice dance event? Because this is, uh, you know, not the, it's hard to say there were th the three teams here that were really in like a mini competition with other teams. It's always like- it That almost weren't like, here. Yeah, everyone yeah, was competing it, it with like a virtual there. performance. So you have, you know, Papadakis and Cicerone who are really competing against- um, Vicky and Nikki. Vicky and Nikki. You have Hubble and Donahue who are kind of against Piper and Paul and Chalk and Bates. And then you have Stepanov mm -hmm. and Duncan, who Averbuk is saying is better than um, Hubble and Donahue, which seems like mm -hmm. blustered. Well, some of the judges agreed. Mm -hmm. There were, I think, maybe three or four judges that agreed with that sentiment. Now, um, Zach did have the issue um, in, in that final choreographic lift that I think opened the door a little bit, but Again, having seen them both in person, there is just no comparison in skating skills, ice coverage, projection. There's none. So, and that's not an America Russia thing. That's just Hubble and Donahue are enormous like skaters that fill the ice with this incredible power and projection. I just don't understand how even a, a, a moment of weakness in that choreographic lift would have opened the door to have put Buka. What I did notice two things if you there are some fan cams uh of the event and i really encourage everyone to watch it because without the zooming in of the tv camera you can see more of ice coverage that you see in ice dance in person that you don't see it's worth watching uh because you can see the stepanov and Buchan do not have the ice coverage or the speed they have lovely lifts and elements like that but and they're great the, performers but in a smaller way they lack yeah. the power yeah um and I don't think a time for us is necessarily so revolutionary, <laughs> you know, that it's so much better yeah. than the Hubble piece, which I also think is less than super effective. But, and the one thing I just, I got nervous when I saw Zach's arm, because I have to be very careful on that first up to make sure that his elbows always stay bent, which is a stupid ice dance rule, but it's the difference between ice dance and pairs and the whole deal. Although I think it's so cool that they are taking a risk and doing something different. So that's just the one thing you don't want that. And to that go. was the lift I loved more watching on television because both of the times I saw it, I was at the other end of the rink. So I got like a somewhat funny view of Madison. Um, but when you see it from the other angle and you see him lift and then slowly like lower his arms, it's a very cool movement when you yeah. see it from that different angle. I was glad to see that. It, the move became even cooler on video, yeah. We do need those kind of key elements to stand out. The, but according to Averbuk, you know, the rhythm dance lift is something that, you know, you could see on Ice Age, you could see it better. Good. Feel free to send me that clip <laughs> where, yes. where that lift is happening, you think it's better, but okay. Uh, I, I don't know that Stepan of Abukin, back streets back is the Olympic moment. Uh, <laughs> what? What? Honey, what is happening? This is- After the Justin Timberlake of last year, they're definitely, they've got like, they just got um, music of the nineties or what is that music of today or whatever. The now, music now what I music, call- Yeah, that's right. Now what I call music. Yeah, I the, ridiculous, but- yeah. There's a taste element, you know, to this team. That yeah. I think the free is fine. I think it's very sixth place. Yes, I think so too. I think as we talk about Can French, talk about Russian, <laughs> three North Americans, yeah, that's, I think they're on the outside of that. No matter, although there was, they were trying. Hungary, I think even Canada. Like a couple of surprising people put them ahead. Yeah, but I don't know. They're always trying. The Russians yeah. love never. Okay, that's yeah, they, yeah. They will always, they will always angle. You got to respect, respect. Yeah. How about Papadakis and Cizeron? So they made changes to their programs. All right, what do you mm -hmm. think? What do you think? Let me have it. You want to do rhythm dance? Rhythm dance again. The these hand movements are not to be brushed aside as just like casual. The, the complexity, the nuance, the synchronization, like this is next level stuff that they're doing. Some people, when they stop and they're like, 
you know, or whatever their, you know, stationary dance move is, it is quite trite. Theirs is so sophisticated. I, I think it's just, it's really magical. The free dance, um, not to reduce it to talking about their packaging, but like they seemed like they wandered in from different programs. Mm -hmm. The red and the black was a nice look. Her gold was a nice look. I didn't necessarily understand how they went together or necessarily with the music. I love a deconstructed tango. I think it's some very cool movements and they take advantage of that. They're, they almost make it look like a choreographic spin, but their final, like when they're posing together in that choreographic lift, is such a cool opportunity to take advantage of that element that other teams don't take, they don't make as much a moment out of. Um, I just, to me, I don't see anyone coming near it, but I, I don't think anyone's near surprised. that. Although they didn't get as big of a score in the rhythm dance as they could have, they did lose a couple levels. So they need to really make sure that they're hitting all those key points. And the midline step was a, a rough thing for every team. I noticed here, and the, the color was very strict, but, uh, I like their rhythm dance more. I don't think that they found the right piece of music for the middle yet. They, they changed mm. it. I don't think it, it's like you've had, the beginning is so freaking good and they just need something in the middle, but it's, yeah. it's not it for me just yet to really, I would, I would go back to the uh, Barnes and Noble, put the headphones on and listen more because something <laughs> is, uh, something's off there. I, I don't know, it's not, as impactful as it could be in the beginning and end, it's so good. You're talking about the slow section in the in the free dance. Yes. Yeah. 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 It does. It just sort of like um, my mind started to wander a little bit in the middle, and then occasionally I'm just appreciating them instead of being moved on a. You know, I'm not on a journey with them. So yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Totally. So, I mean, I just I don't know why I want it to I want to like it more than I do at times you know mm -hmm. in the middle but the beginning and the end is so fabulous um, yes sophisticated again it's just something so hot it's like love lovely and highbrow I, I don't know I just she believes every ounce of it you know and, she, yeah, and she's and they, feeling good that team is right that's her ball yeah. to the point where she outskates him at certain points there's somewhere he's like you know not uh, his max, but I, I think that they're on a journey. I think every ice dance journey getting to the Olympics seems a little bit stressful and complicated and not as- And personal, quite frankly. Yeah. I think their, their journey through this, their journey out of whatever was going on last season with the fears and her, her sort of burnout, like I, I think they, they have a lot to navigate and they seem to be navigating it well because I'm seeing well-executed programs and they seem okay about them. I have to say, but they're free. The music is lovely. The movements are lovely. I don't feel on a journey with them just yet. And I think that there is some development and I don't know if it's in the music edit or if it's in the choreography or if it's everything. Like I'm left feeling like the Tessa and Scott Moulin Rouge before it had the revamp. And it's mm. my personal opinion. I think they are brilliant skaters. I think they are far and above the best in the world. I don't think the program is as good as they can B. Well, and it's, it's sort of like the you ending is fabulous. I think that there are so many pieces that are just fabulous, that curve lift, everything, but I'm left just wanting a little something from it. A bit more storyline, maybe? A bit more story, a bit more heart, a bit Yeah. Some, yeah. Yeah. A well, little more that? in your face. I just not not bombastic, but just like a little bit more connection in the, mm. the and it's like two and yeah, like in the middle. I don't know. It's just something that I appreciate it so much. I, I watch it. I'm like, I'm watching the best skaters in the world. I am. This is sophisticated. This is beautiful. But in the past, you know, when the happiness did not, cannot wait came in or. But it, it just grabbed you by the heart. And I don't mm -hmm. think that this free does that in the same way or in the middle of to build a home. All of a sudden you're just like, wow, right? This, to me, you don't get there, right? The last move, you're like, wow. But the, on the, look, we're comparing against, you know, team that has had brilliant, brilliant programs. And, right, you know, right. Through. But to me, this is one of their, I don't know. It's, it, needs, it needs some tweaking and some work. And um, 
I see well, I think you bring up an interesting yeah. point about the arc because like uh, all the programs you're mentioning, they all had emotional subtext. So yeah. we knew this was a part that was like a, an emotional abandon or this part was sensitive and loving and this part was fiery and all this sort of stuff. And I, I, do, I don't necessarily follow a, a character or theatrical arc or journey yeah. through this like I might. Like if they started with like a formal tango and then took it apart only to then put it back together or something at the end or, or for me to follow what, why did it start that way? Why did it end that way? And what in the middle got us between those two points? Yeah. Mm. I just think we're seeing a lot of pretty elements and pretty skating, but I'm not connecting and perhaps in the way it's intended. And it could be on okay. me, but I rewatched it and watched it a number of times and I feel like I go in and out of it. Yeah, yeah. And I don't want to be going in and out of it because I love right, They're not in and out of it skaters. Yeah, yeah. They, they can hold your attention the whole time. It was interesting going and watching Hubble and Donahue again, even though their score comparatively was lower, not only than theirs at Skate America, but We're obviously lower than <laughs> Yes, well, but again, he made an error that, that he did not make at Skate America, but, um, I did, I did almost like their program more than Piper and Paul in some ways. Okay. This time, this time, having seen the Piper and Paul live with some awkward moments like that awkward piggyback lift and things like that. And it's a bit more generically pleasing to everyone. I think the music and that, that thing then versus that la, 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 whatever's going on in the Hubble and Donahue music. But suddenly I thought, well, there is a bit more gravitas here than I remembered. Yeah, I would. Who is it again? Who is singing that? Is it like Sia or something? No, it's um. I, 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 I. And I think like it's directly with the composer. They have a connection to the composer. If I understand. Like that. deconstructed Aaron Neville. <laughs> it's Drowning by Anne Sila. So Sila. Maybe someone said Sila, and I thought they said Sia, and I was like, this doesn't sound. She like was on level. She was on the French version of The Voice in the fourth season. So. Mm. When it gets into the big part, it, it does become more effective. But I don't know, it, it was just suddenly I thought, no, this is a little more interesting to me than the, the Canadian material right now. It It'll is, be interesting to see where that group goes. Yeah, it's an interesting journey that we're on. What, what did Tessa Virtue's music called Pilgrims on a Long Journey that everyone loves to steal? We are pilgrims on a long journey with the I Am School, okay? Yeah, Marie yeah. France, she didn't peek in her outfit last week she looked better this week you know she's leaning into her style she's yeah i think COVID just when you think she can't look better you know I think maybe she couldn't go shopping at the boutiques as much and now she's <laughs> climbing out of and place. you know you have to do that in person it's not the same online she's she a woman feel the fabric theme. she needs to feel the fat yes you know yes yeah, yeah. Uh, that's how that we're watching her and barbara in canada you're like these are performers first and foremost they are excellent coaches that is clear but they, they have that thing. They, they like to be seen and to emote, yeah. And then looking at, uh, you know, Green and Parsons here, hmm. what, is it gonna be the Olympics this year? What is your take? I mean, they're pushing forward, it's- The fall was tough. The fall yeah, was tough the fall here. Was I did, the... I, I liked their free dance here more on video than I did in person in Canada, because I think a lot of it had to do with camera angles and me being able to see their facial expressions and some of the positions they got in, where based on where I was sitting, I was seeing it from behind or from the side. And I was more taken with it. The colors also show up better on their costumes in the free dance on television. In person, they kind of got lost. Um, we do her costume for sure. It, um, it's mainly yeah. hers that I'm talking about. That earth tone just kind of got lost in person. Yeah. But it looked better on, on TV. They have some real inherent qualities. And I know that people are ready to move past maybe Caitlin and John Luke. But I think if they show up with decent material, Caitlin and John Luke should not have an issue. I mean, it's out of not that scene. They have to perform well because this team yeah. is performing consistently so well I'm, I'm forged, I just I was sad about that era yeah because that was a pretty it was a pretty obvious setback I thought but they're, they're doing some really Probably lovely era. stuff yeah. yeah so what was your moment of the weekend of all the things oh gosh yes Dave let me think about this let me go by discipline Women, I was just shocked. I was shocked that Anna was able to do it. So that was always lovely. I didn't know she could do that quad flip. I know it had been a struggle, 
So, but I'm gonna say Yuma. I'm gonna say Yuma's comeback because it just felt good. It, yeah. yeah, so I, I think that even more than the French, and I know the French will give give me moments later, um, but but really it was the, and Swain Han, no, I'm gonna go with the Yuma comeback. Yuma comeback, how about you? I mean, like my top five would be like Papadakis is his wrong. Uh, always, um, you know, Swain Han, grateful to yeah. see Swain Han, but uh, gotta say Anna's, I think in the third position, her comeback. Second would be Luna's short program. Mm. Like having the comeback of all comebacks yeah that program was great to see and love those knees and those skating skills so want to know what were your moments of the weekend who's on your pyramid what is happening honeys My who's phone. calling oh, it's who's russia calling? russia's calling that's who's coming to dinner <laughs> oh man it did look sexy everyone. Bye. hi guys <laughs>